living for you, my dear. It's like living a world. I could do. Hear my plea. I got to make you see that our love is dying. Our love is dying. All the phone you ignore. Somehow I must. Somehow I must. How I must explain. I'm going to rap on your door. Tap on your window. Pain. Tap on your window. Pain. I'm going to get by your steps. Until I get through to you. I got to change of you, baby, till you come back to me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Okay, look at here, y'all. Look at here, y'all. Look at here, look at here. This uh, video that I'm about to do, I hope all is well with everybody out there. I hope you're taking care of your mentals. I hope you be just being, and that means just being in touch. Just being in touch with what's going on inside and how we're feeling is what I call being in touch with your mentors, okay? So there's really just no, um, you know, nebulous thing or anything. It's something that's, that's very tangible, okay? So I'm doing this video for you, Sherry, today because I had one of our subscribers ask me about, about panic disorders. And although I've done a video back in the past, years and years ago, I don't know if I've revisited the panic disorder uh, component of some of the emotions and uh, anxieties, basically, that we go through. So, what is a panic disorder? A panic disorder is an anxiety disorder characterized by recurrent unexpected panic attacks and the individual's response to those attacks. A panic attack is a surge of intense fear and discomfort that usually peaks within 10 minutes, but it can also last as long as seven hours. Okay? Now, what is a panic attack? What does it feel like? Your heart starts skipping beats. You may sweat. You may experience trembling or shaking, a shortness of breath, uh, feelings like you're choking, chest pains or discomfort, nausea or abdominal distress, feeling dizzy, unsteady, lightheaded or faint, chills or heat sensations, numbers or uh, numbness, I'm sorry, or tinglingness and a tingling sensation. Feelings of unreality or being detached from oneself. Fear of losing control or going crazy. Hmm. And a fear of dying. Okay, all those, these are the characteristics of, a, of what you feel when you're going through. So individuals with panic disorder also become persistently worried about having future attacks or change their behavior significantly to avoid having panic attacks. Okay? It's like any other mental disorder, these symptoms can cause a significant amount of distress and impairment in one's daily life. Sometimes a panic attack and a heart attack is mistaken for, you know, one for another. 
So part of the panic disorder is worrying about the consequences of, of the panic attacks. Many people mistake panic attacks for heart attacks due to their similarity. A cardiac chest pain as experienced in heart attacks is typically brought on by movement or exertion, while a panic attack is usually not associated with exercise. People with cardiac chest pain can also become winded from the amount of exercise, whereas those with a panic disorder are unaffected by exercise. Cardiac chest pains are also associated with older ages and a history of a more numerous medical conditions when being compared to a panic disorder. Meaning, you know, you may have offsetting conditions like, you know, heart, heart problems, high blood pressure, hypertension, those things can bring it on. Uh, it is important to note that the mere presence of panic attacks is not sufficient to meet the criteria for diagnosing a panic disorder. A panic attack is an anxiety reaction that can occur in other anxiety disorders or anxiety provoking situations for people without anxiety disorders. Panic disorder infrequently occurs in absence of other mental disorders. Okay? So don't think that, you know, you this 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 stands alone people with panic disorder often have other anxiety disorders major depression bipolar disorder mild alcohol use um, reported lifetime rates of co-occurrence between major depression and panic disorder range from six, 10 to 65 percent Panic disorder also frequently co-occurs with other medical conditions such as dizziness, cardiac arrhythmias, hyperthyroidism, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and irritable bowel syndrome. Wow, isn't that something? So the 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 panic disorder usually runs comorbid with those other medical conditions. Interesting. And when I say comorbidly, it means they run together with. The one-year prevalence for panic disorder is 2 to 3% of the United States and European countries. Asian, African, and Latin American countries have lower prevalence rates, ranging from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.8. Females are twice as likely to be affected than males, and the gender difference is observed as early as adolescence. Now, the median age of onset of panic disorder in the United States is 20 to 24 years old. A small percentage of cases occur in childhood or it's possible later adulthood. Okay, so you may ask, what causes a panic disorder? The exact causes of a panic disorder are basically unknown. Certain genes may confer vulnerability to panic disorder, though the exact genes and mechanisms are unknown. Children of parents with anxiety, depressive, and bipolar disorders have higher rates of panic disorder. Brain models of panic disorder emphasize the brain structures involved in anxiety and fear. Um, so you can see the physical brain looking different. Brain models of panic disorder emphasize the brain structures. Uh, in the United States, Latinos, African Americans, Caribbean Blacks, and Asian Americans report lower rates of panic disorder than non-Latino whites. Native Americans report the highest rates. Asian, African, Latin American countries also report lower rates of panic disorder 
than the United States and European countries. These disparities can be partially explained by different cultures' treatment of fears and attributed to of the panic attacks. Black people are constantly under um, attack in this culture, so I can I can um I can understand that. Uh, ours is associated with a total pain body period. Well, if if we were to suffer, I think that's why we're elevated in so many ways. Anyway, examples of culture specific characterizations associated associated with panic attacks include hit by the wind, uh, trung go, that's what it means in Vietnamese culture. I take the nervous attack of the nerves among Latin Americans, a kayak, soul loss, a soul loss amongst Cambodians. Hmm. That's what they call it. They trung trung geo, hit by the wind. And that's what they say in Vietnamese culture. Interesting. Uh, attack de nervos, nervios, attack of nerves among Latin Americans, and kayai, soul loss among Cambodians. Both medication and psychotherapy can be effective to treat panic disorder. Medications typically prescribed are anti-anxiety medications and antidepressants. A combination of medication and psychotherapy is found to be most effective. So is exercising, having a good support group, uh, being being able to have a sponsor for when you are going through an episode, they can kind of talk to you, bring you back down to earth. Those things are, are, are okay as well. So, again, if you ask me, what is what is the symptoms? Remember, heart palpations, sweating, trembling and shaking, shortness of breath, feelings of choking, chest pains or discomfort, nausea or abdominal abdominal distress. And a lot of these symptoms, as I read earlier, are kind of like symptoms of a heart attack. And that's a lot of times what you feel like when you are having an anxiety attack. Feeling dizzy, unsteady, lightheaded, or faint. Chills or heat sensations, numbness or tingling sensations. Feelings of unreality or being detached from oneself. Fear of losing control or going crazy. Fear of dying. So these are some of the causes, the symptoms, and um, the treatment for panic disorder. If anybody you know or if you are suffering from panic disorder, remember, you can always call the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill or any available mental health or hotline, I don't know what the uh, 911, 211 in your city, and you can always be led to someone that will talk to you about some of the uh, emotional or mental problems that you may face and find yourself, you know, in the midst of. So take advantage of it. Okay? 30 years ago, people didn't have these tools. You know, it wasn't no Oprah. <laughs> Oprah wasn't uh, working when my mama was coming up and my dad was coming up. So some of the things that they learned was that they just dealt with. Okay? 
and we have the opportunity to uh, take that and, and take it a step further. So let's do that. Let's make our mental health a priority. I think next month is National Mental Health Month, I believe. Anyway, with that being said, if you like what you hear, please subscribe. Please share the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. No. No, no, no.